I understand it correctly, essentially, Francisca, the reason we have cancer today was because 500 million years ago, one cell said, we're going to have to be multicellular, but the covenant to be multicellular. You use almost a religious word in covenant. Was that intentional? Um, <laughs> no, not necessarily intentional. <laughs> but I think that, but, but you're right. It's the evolution of multicellularity that allowed us to do so many things. Right? We can now build a giraffe that can eat leaves from the top of the tree. If we're unicellular, we can't get up there. So it's a really great way of invading new niches in the global ecosystem. So multicellularity makes a great deal of sense, which is why it's been relatively successful. Don't tell the bacteria. Uh, <laughs> but relatively successful. But once you have multicellularity, you've got division. Once you've got division, you've got some cells sometimes that are going to become rogue cells. And you mentioned since we have a, a trillion blood cells a day, that means thousands every day. So in any given moment in our time, how many cells in our body are cancerous? So if we decide that cancerous means it has all the phenotypes that we need to invade the tissue and be really aggressive and eventually kill the patient, then hopefully very little. Right. But there are lots of different steps on the road to cancer. The first step is the first mutation that becomes numerous within the singular tissue. So that could be hundreds of thousands or millions of cells of or first mutation or already or each day? Or billions of cells. Or size. billions a day first billions mutation. Billions of cells, right. first mutation. And then it has to get the second mutation. Mm -hmm. So it has to evade the immune system. It has to not listen to signals to tell it to commit suicide. So, so that's very unlikely. So maybe 99.999% of cells will be killed. Right. But these very rare cells then could give rise to a new clone, proliferate accumulate a second mutation. And then the evolution works against us. Because these cells have evaded, sort of like antibiotics, and, and we've heard in earlier sessions where we talk about the, the dosing basically leaving us the strong bugs, here and now the, the evolution is working against us all of a sudden. Cancer, exactly. Those cancer cells that have evaded are the strong ones. Exactly. So now maybe we can use an understanding of evolution to turn this distorted scale around. Maybe now we can use an understanding of how to describe evolution with mathematical modeling to try to get an advantage over these cells because now we understand how they evolve. Maybe we can stop evolution from happening. So Andrew pointed out it's not a good idea to pick a fight with evolution <laughs> and cancer is essentially the body's fight with, a, with, with rapid evolution inside the body. And so you're saying math allows us to predict how that evolution really functions, just like math can predict all kinds of things. Why has nobody done more of applications of math and cancer then? Yeah, it's a complicated system, right? If you talk about physics, it doesn't matter if I drop this. It doesn't matter for the physics of, of this thing falling towards the floor, whether we talk in the meanwhile. Right. But in a cancer cell, everything is intermingled. One protein doesn't exist in the absence of all these other millions of proteins in the cell. So it's very hard to do isolated experiments. So and that's why it's hard to find out what the rules are that underlie this behavior. I see. So the math so is it's complicated. A, it's a more complicated. But you're arguing that even if the math is complicated, we can know enough of the math. So even though we may have only have a partial picture, that math is good enough to make some decisions. Exactly. So the art of what we do is to abstract to the right level. We don't want to have a mathematical model that describes every single detail at the atomic scale. We want to come up with a model that describes the important behavior at the right scale. We're interested in how cells grow. That depends on their fitness, how quickly they can grow, and how quickly they can mutate. We don't need to know what every single atom in this cell does. Right. And I think that's the art of mathematical modeling. Well, Francisco, there's a lot of us that are wishing you a long and successful career and thousands and thousands more behind you. Uh, those E.O. Wilson people who didn't want to do the math, they're over there, and the ones that do can join you. Thank you very much, Thank Francisco. You.